Hi guys, this is Medmania. So let's see the continuation of the last video. So the drugs acting on skin and mucous membrane, second part. Oh sorry, and um, guys, I'm really sorry about the background noise. I know it was annoying, but I don't know what to do. So let's see the groups. The first group is keratolytics. That is a continuation. Okay, the keratolytics are substance that dissolve the intracellular substance in the horny layer of the skin. In this, the epidermal cells are uh, swollen and uh, desquamate. Okay, the keratolytics is used in hyperkeratotic lesions. The hyperkeratotic lesions are nothing but psoriasis, chronic dermatitis, ringworm infection, athlete foot, etc. The examples of keratolytics are salicylic acid. Oh, sorry, I made a spelling mistake. That is salicylic acid, not salicyclic. Okay. It is given in addition with alcohol or propylene glycol. The propylene glycol supplements salicylic acid action, okay, and it acts as a mild antiseptic and antifungal also. So the other drug is erythrocinol. It is a antifungal and antiseptic. The next drug we are going to see is urea. Urea also has a softening and solubilization property. So this also acts as a hygroscopic, okay. The next group of drugs is antisebolics. Antisebolics. These are drugs which are effective in seboric dermatitis. This seboric dermatitis is a disease which affects areas rich in sebaceous gland. Okay. Seboric is nothing but a dandruff, a common complaint what we face in our daily life. The causative agents are a Pterosporum ovale, which is an yeast. And the trigger factors are increased sweating and emotional stress and the genetic problems. Examples of antiseptics are selenium sulfide. The actions are anti-keratolytic and fungicidal to Pterosporum ovale, the yeast. Okay, and it should not be applied on inflamed or damaged skin. Otherwise, it will cause adverse effects. So the next drug is zinc pyrethone. Zinc pyrethone inhibits the P ovale, and because of that, it decreases the, the it reduces the dandruff. Okay, so it is often combined with the ketoconazole. And the next drug is corticosteroid. The corticosteroids are used as a scalp lotion, and it relieves the symptoms of seborrheic dermatitis. And yeah, it is highly effective in treating seboric dermatitis. So the next drug we are going to see is imidazole antifungals. It is also an example of antiseborics. The main drug is ketoconazole, which is most effective against P ovale. That is that Pterosporum ovale, the yeast what I mentioned earlier. Almost uh, no side effects is present, and uh, the other drugs are sulfur, resorcinol, salicyclic acid. The next group of drug is melanizing agent. These melanizing agent are nothing but drugs that increase sensitivity to solar radiation and thus promote the repigmentation of vitiligenous areas of skin. Vitiligenous area means the area where there is lack of melanocytes. Okay, the sura lens, sura lens or the drugs which are the furocomerins. Furocomerins are nothing but organic chemical compound produced by various plants. Okay. The two drugs namely the methoxaline and trioxaline or the synthetic sorolins. Okay. In this the methoxaline has a decreased phosphorus metabolism. So this synthetic sorolins are of topical and oral both therapies. Okay. And the next group of drugs are uh, drugs for psoriasis which can come as a short note I think so. Psoriasis is nothing but a localized or widespread erythematous scaling lesion or clicks. The drugs that are administered for psoriasis will only diminish the lesion but cannot cure the disease. Okay, This is the main point we have to note and the actions are keratolytic, antifungals and it also offers a sympathetic relief. The primary drug used in psoriasis is corticosteroids and the therapy should be started with the high potency drug that is a steroid. Topically used drugs are calcipotriol. Calcipotriol is a synthetic non-hypercalcemic vitamin D analog. Okay. The mechanism of action is 
it binds to the intracellular vitamin D receptor in epidermal keratinocytes. So then it suppresses the proliferation of the keratinocytes. And this drug is combined with steroidal which is more effective. The next drug is the tazarotene. This is a synthetic retinoid and it is also a pro drug. Okay. The mechanism of action is it binds to the intracellular retinoic acid receptor. Okay. So in the, it offers a anti-inflammatory effect and uh, it also has an anti-proliferative effect. The drug named the Qualtar, it is also a drug used in psoriasis. It provides phototoxic action on skin. And the next one is photochemotherapy, PUVA, that is Soralin Ultraviolet A. Okay. What we have to note here is, this chemotherapy has both oxygen dependent and oxygen independent reactions. Okay. The mechanism of action is it binds to the pyramidal bases and thus it interferes with the DNA synthesis and it also interferes with the epidermal turnover. The uses of uh, photochemotherapy are it is used to accelerate tanning in lichen planters, in atopic dermatitis and in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Dosage can be in the form of oral administration that is oral methoxalane which is followed one to two hours later by a ultraviolet a exposure and the, and the common adverse effects are mottling, erythema, burns, blistering, irritation, discomfort, scaling and the main adverse effects is teratogenic which is by tazarotene drug okay and then the next group of drug is demelanizing agents so the mechanism of action is these drugs will uh, help in lightening of the hyperpigmented patches on the skin. Okay, the drugs are hydroquinone, monobenzene, azelaic acid. This hydroquinone it acts by inhibiting the tyrosinase enzyme and acts as a demonizing agent. So we have to be cautious while using it because if we withdraw it immediately, it will cause the repigmentation of the skin. So that's the conclusion. The drugs of acne vulgaris will be the last part and it will be continued in the next video. So happy Vijay Dasmi to all and don't forget to like, share and subscribe my video. And we'll see you in the next video. Until then, tata bye bye. Thank you.